Good morning. I will try to not speak about Darkest, but I will speak about Saint Denis. So Saint Denis is a town located in the surrounding of Paris, so it's a very urbanized environment. And so now it's impossible to get uh, the, an idea of what was the ancient topography. And this is the 9th century mode, which is quite famous because it is written in a in a, in, a, in a written sources that it was built by Charles Le Chauve, the little son of uh, Carlo Magnus. So uh, the only information about the environment we have is from ancient maps from the army. And so it's an uh, environment with a lot of river, marshy uh, places. And the geological map uh, said that there is quite an area with your deposits, tertiary mall and sand, and the soils belong to the complex de la Seine, which is a very big thing with a lot of things in it. So it's quite diffi difficult to, to understand. Um, on the contrary, the urban development is quite known because there is a lot of excavation since uh, 1970. And the town developed because of the sanctuary of the, the tombs of the Franking kings since the Merovingian period. And there is a great fair since the 7th century, and uh, you have uh, evolution, and uh, archaeology permitted to discover crafting activity and coinage, and so on. So there is a strong artificialization of the hydro system, even if we don't know what kind of environment there were be before this. Uh, in the written sources, we know that the Krult River was canalized since the 9th century uh, by 7 kilometers long. And that this water was used to fill moats, so the, these big moats, and the ditches in Saint Denis. Uh, so, this is a, uh, urban type stratification, of course, and there is a strong relation between town and rivers. So, uh, what are the geoarchaeological questions? Of course, uh, there is global issues such as interaction between society and environment and the co construction of the strata, but more practical question deals with three points. First is what is the geological substrate and what are the type of soils we have before and during the occupation because the archaeologists speak about the chamois soil because of its color. So what is the soil and um, how are used and fields the river, the ditches and the moat? Uh, how is uh, artificialized the marshy environment? Um, we know that the with the written sources that the moat was uh, sitting up since the 10th, so it's quite uh, rapid. And what about the artificialization between these moats? And about the building material, there is a lot of um, archaeological feature, but it's uh, excavated ones, so pits, pots, holes, and there is uh, very few remains before the 12th century. And the stone foundation is only uh, used uh, after the since the, the 13th century, uh, even if we have traces of gypsum used in Watto uh, remain. So I took uh, a three excavation places, A, B, C, located inside uh, the medieval town, uh, in the trace of the moat and outside the town. Um, I choose them between a five-year survey. And uh, for the three points, I got six points uh, to deal with the salt and the substrate, uh, four points to deal with the channels, uh, two channels before the, the Charles Le Chauve modes, uh, the big uh, modes of Charles Le Chauve, and uh, uh, 11th century ditch. And concerning the building material, uh, we have uh, two floors between the 10th and the 11th century, then you can see here. So uh, methods are quite common in geology. Uh, I use the documentation in the national maps, for example, the geophysic drillings, chemistry is used in some uh, places you will see, and uh, of course, strata examination and micromorphology. So concerning the substrate, um, the moral substrate is uh, ubiquitous, but it's very below uh, the stratigraphy, and on top of it we have up to one meter of alluvial sand, or one or two meter of city <coughs> sand or sandy silt. Uh, so this is the marl, and you see you have a different uh, example of uh, the sites. And there are uh, gypsum everywhere, but in traces of uh, redeposition crystals. 
So concerning the soils, um, there are mainly fluvial soils in sandy alveolar uh, material um, with the more bedrock uh, below. This could explain the hydromorphy at the bottom because of the impermeability of the marl. And there is a lot of bioturbation and a gradation of um, amount of city uh, components and uh, the impact of human activities such as uh, agricultural practices and refuse input. Uh, this is a uh, completely anthro soils developing in uh, alluvial sequence. I will talk uh, later, more later. And so uh, it's quite well preserved because it's under a massive input of mar uh, material, and it's composed by silty sand and sandy silt, but mainly by sub horizontal uh, organization of plant remains, a small plant remain like that. And there is a few anthropic waste but bioturbation. So concerning the ditches and the mode, um, the excavation B uh, permitted to get very interesting, uh, three very interesting places. So two environments before the construction of the, the 9th century modes of Charles de So in the first place we have, uh, this is the alluvial sequence I talked just before. Uh, we have uh, at the bottom a lot of sm small mark uh, around like that, and the <coughs> stratification show a cycle deposition of sand with anthropic waste like eggshells, for example, but also bone ceramics and so on, and uh, small uh, silt uh, deposition with a lot of herbivorous excrement with phytolites. Uh, in the second place, there is a small uh, alluvial sequence uh, between two massive deposits of marl and waste, uh, more or less silty. Uh, the, at the bottom, there is a sandy sorted material, then uh, containing a lot of anthropic waste, uh, like uh, uh, brown uh, material, egg, egg bones, and so on. Uh, uh, fish bone, but, uh, sorry. And then on top, we have a uh, silty sorted alluvial material. Or maybe it could be an episodic flooding of, uh, of the place. What about the, uh, the big moat? So uh, it's uh, dug uh, to the mall, and then there is a silty to clayish deposit with very few uh, high dynamic flows, such uh, these small sandy lenses uh, in it. There is no anthropic material uh, in the thin sections. But a lot of, of plants remain, uh, like this, with uh, grains, uh, seeds, sorry, and uh, diatoms. And there is no uh, clear evidence of sewage of this place. So there's a quick silting up and maybe a restricted area. So this is a, another example of ditches, uh, completely different in another location and a bit later in the chronology. Mm, but there's, there is also cycles of deposition of granosalted sorted silt and sand, but also hiatuses in the, in the accumulation, uh, which permitted to, uh, bioturbation to develop. And there is two very interesting units, because the first um, contain a lot of melted silica and show a concentration of lead, and the other is full of domestic waste. So if we have a ditch which is used for drainage, but also uh, for uh, refuse uh, domestic or uh, uh, crafting activity refuse. So concerning the floor, the first example is in fact located uh, on top of the, um, the ninth century moat, the big moat, uh, and inside the dark earth. So I talk about dark earth. Um, <laughs> and it's uh, composed by a thick marl preparation, uh, which is burned on top and covered by uh, a lot of ashes, plant ashes, with very well preserved cell morphology, and then uh, quite classic plant layers, uh, floors with domestic waste on top. So there is local material in the building of this floor, and quite low processed uh, material. The second example is uh, also uh, between the 10th and the, and the, and the, and the, and the, the 11th, because it's uh, stratigraphically upper, but we don't have yet uh, a date. So uh, the, the preparation of the basement, uh, the base of the floor is quite similar. It's floor preparation, but then we have a, a small sandy layer, and after that, 
a, a cycles of rebuilding with very small clay uh, so floors and uh, in be between these clay floors, uh, domestic waste, quite usual. Thank you. Uh, so here we have uh, not only local material, because this clay is not carbonated, so it don't come from the, the substrate, and uh, frequently maintained uh, surfaces. This is uh, here in, in, in this. So it's very small, but there is maybe 20 uh, layers of clay. So concerning the discussion about the three main points, the geological and the pedological context, so we have no uh, data about the type of substrate, uh, which is mainly composed of alluvial uh, city sand, which erodes the, the, the mall, and the soil are um, mostly brown fluggy soil with a strong anthropic signal on top. Uh, the anthro soil we examined uh, is developed in wet environment and is uh, marked with a strong anthropic constraints because it's uh, between alluvial sequences and uh, occupation. Uh, the ditches are uh, always due to the mall, uh, maybe to use the impermeability of the, of the material. And there is a high complexity of the flux management because we see that there is um, marshy places, but also maybe flooding uh, events and then uh, artificial in these <coughs> channels and the uh, near fence remote. So, and concerning the building material of the floors, uh, we, we have local, uh, quite unprocessed uh, mall material used, plant mass, uh, quite usual, and clay surfaces frank frankly maintained. So, uh, perspective uh, now, uh, because it's a quite recent uh, research, is to map this information of the substrate and the soil, um, to know if there is, uh, an extension of the different uh, type of soil we have and uh, get the altitude of the different uh, dif different um, profiles to know if they are connected with the draw systems and so on. And it would be very interesting to try to link the, the history of the channels we have and the written sources uh, if it's possible. Uh, and concerning the building matter, uh, I was quite surprised to don't uh, found uh, gypsum because uh, it's quite uh, used in the in the region and uh, there is ubiquitous in the substrate and the soils. So uh, where is the gypsum? And of course, it could be very interesting to compare this data concerning the floor with other uh, data in the ancient excavation in Saint Denis because it was very. Um, there, there, there were a lot of excavation uh, since the 1970, but it's uh, a hard work uh, deep in the archives, so I will do it uh, a bit later. So thank you very much for your attention.